obviously Mother's Day, we're talking about that, and uh, uh, like that video referenced, it can be an emotional day uh, for many of us. Many of us here have lost mothers. Some of us have had uh, the desire to be a mother and have had to wrestle when that wasn't part of God's plan. You know, my, a lot of those things in the video, my wife has personally wrestled through, as many of you know, and, and I've been there with her. Um, so it's, 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 it's going to be a challenging day. Uh, we can have challenging relationships with our mothers, right? So regardless of how this day may present its inherent challenges for each of us, I also believe that God wants us to honor the mothers or motherly figures that have loved us the way that God loves us, that have mothered us. I think of man, so many women in this church. You know, I was 19 when I became a Christian. I need a lot of fathering and a lot of mothering, okay? A lot of it. And uh, so it is important that we honor that and that we learn from these women who God has raised up to inspire us, to comfort us, and to challenge us and to be there for us. Maybe some of you here are feeling, man, I've never experienced a motherly figure in my life, let alone a mom who was even physically there. I would say that, first of all, God is heartbroken about that, but God gave us all free will. And part of the cost of that love that comes with free will is that sometimes sinners are going to sin. And we live in a broken world that we just have broken. But I would also say that God has a vision. God has a vision to, as the Psalms say, to place the lonely in families. That is part of God's plan, to redeem the world, to set the lonely in spiritual families, in spiritual homes, where they can have the spiritual moms that they have never had. You know, I, I never had older brothers that I could look up to, and that was something growing up I always wanted, and God has given me so many of those. Since I become a Christian. In the same way, God wants to give us all mothers to be nurtured by and to be cared for. God wants to give us all spiritual moms that we can learn from. I believe there are spiritual moms and women who will become spiritual moms, regardless of whether they are physical moms or not, in this very room today. And we can learn from them all. Turn your Bibles to John chapter 2. Today we're going to learn from Mary, the mother of Jesus himself, right? And Mary's not her physical mom, but she was Jesus' mom. So it's kind of like, well, you should probably listen to what she has to say at some point. And I think her faith could have definitely allowed her to be a spiritual mom to all of us in this room if she were here physically today. In this chapter... Mary's going to show us from her view what it meant to walk with God. She literally walked with God. So this morning, I just want us to picture today like we're sitting on the back porch on one of those little, little, little rocking chairs with Mary herself. And she's, you know, maybe you're drinking some lemonade with her. It's a nice sunny day. And she's just going to tell you what she learned from following her son, Jesus. Amen? So we're going to learn from Mary, and we're going to learn about what she learned from walking with her son. The title of the lesson this morning is, A Mom Walking with God? Because we do, uh, we do life with God, right? We build family with God. We are family with God. And so we're going to learn how a mom walked with God this morning. John chapter 2, verse 1. You guys there? It says, On the third day... A wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, Hey, they have no more wine. Woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied, My hour has not yet come. We have two convictions from Mary this morning that I think we all can hopefully take something away from. First conviction she had from walking with Jesus is that Jesus can do anything. Jesus can do anything. I love that Mary's first instinct upon seeing this massive gaping need at this wedding, it was to go to her son. Let's go to Jesus. 
Her first instinct wasn't to try and figure everything out by herself. It was not, man, let me get on Amazon real quick and try to figure out if I can ship it, like, right now. She didn't start going to, like, 80 grocery stores, call Uber Eats. She did not wear herself out to see if, if there was even any wine left at the next door neighbor's. Like, hey, you know, sometimes you want to borrow some sugar, right? Well, can we borrow, like, five cases of wine? She did not start running like a chicken with her head cut off, which is what any of us can be prone to do, mother or not, as soon as we encounter a problem of much smaller magnitudes than this. To run out of wine at an ancient wedding meant that this host would be forever ridiculed. I don't know if y'all heard that. I heard her. Uh, uh. All right. Is that Aunt Louise? <laughs> Aunt Louise, who's calling you? <laughs> it better be God. <laughs> it's church. <laughs> Aunt Louise gives me a hard time. So, you know, happy Mother's Day. Amen. I'll stop. <laughs> She's over here just, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> But, you know, to, to run out of wine in the wedding that you hosted, that was a big social faux pas. Forever in that community, you'd be like, hey, that was the family that ran out of wine at that wedding. You remember them? Ha, <laughs> ha, what losers, you know? Like, that would be them. So you didn't want that reputation for the rest of your existence as a family, and back then family was everything, so your, 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 your kids would be probably hearing about that, right? So this was catastrophic on a social level. Big problem. But as soon as Mary saw that this was the problem of this family, she went to Jesus. And she didn't even really ask him to do a miracle. It was kind of an awkward situation, right? You can kind of picture her kind of like hitting, her, hitting his elbow, like just let him know the situation. And you could tell Jesus knew immediately what she was getting at. Woman. Leave me alone. Mom, stop. Please stop. Not right now, Mom. It is not yet my time. This was at the beginning of Jesus' ministry. So he was understandably trying to keep a low profile. Because we saw what happened at the end of his ministry, right? When everybody knew who he was. So he's like, dude, I haven't even started yet. I, I really can't and should not be doing anything right now. I'm just at this wedding. Like, I just, can I just hang out and chill by this corner? No, you can't. You're Jesus. But regardless of what Jesus decided to do, Mary believed that her son could do anything. And I don't know if she knew what she, he was near. This was at the beginning of the ministry, right? So who knew what she knew what he was actually capable of? Either way, she believed that Jesus... And not all these other strategies or other ideas or resources. She said, no, 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 forget all that. Jesus is going to meet this family's need. My son will meet this family's need. She believed her son was the answer. Mary's heart should remind us of something that we get to grasp as Christians, and it's, it's powerful. And it's that living life with God, with Jesus, walking with God, Jesus means that on any given day, at any given moment, anything is possible. Anything's possible for someone who walks with God. And really, for those who don't walk with God. When I, I remember before I became a Christian, all the things God had to do to intervene, to even just to get me to read my Bible. In this moment, Jesus didn't even necessarily want to be involved. He flat out said, it's not my time. My hour's not yet come. Well, leave me alone. But I think this is where Jesus, the heart of Jesus, just wants to work with us. He's not rigid. The heart of Jesus, in one sense, is soft, and, and he can work with his people. With Jesus, as long as you keep walking with him, you just never know what miracle he just may decide to pull off at random. His hour had not yet come, yet Jesus loves people. So he basically just went, whatever, I'll hook you up. 
I got you. It's not my time, but you know what? Because I care about you and my mom's bugging me. Sure, here, here's five cases of wine right here. I got your back. I'll hook you up. Why not? That's who Jesus is. When we don't deserve it, when it's not even necessarily our, our timing, Jesus can just say, hey, you know what? Sure, I'll take care of you. Because that's his heart. Columbia Church, do we see Jesus the way see Mary saw Jesus on Mother's Day? Oh, so Ooh, hey, man, you're all right. I want to say something again, but, you know. You need some help? Got it? <laughs> that better be God, Aunt Louise. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. We love you. We love you. <laughs> but do we see Jesus the way Mary sees her son? Do we believe in our heart of hearts? Like, you really think about it. And, and you, you live the way you live. You, you, make the, you make the decisions that you make. And you think about how you actually live your life. Do you really believe that Jesus can do anything? Do you really believe that at, at any given moment, at any time, he can work a miracle in your life? And does your life reflect that belief? Do we believe that Jesus can heal any broken family? Any broken family, Jesus can heal it. Do we believe that he can help us overcome any addiction? Do we believe even when we've been praying for years and there's been no answer? Do we believe that at any given moment, Jesus just may say, it ain't my time yet, but you know what? I got your back. Mary was part of a miracle because her first instinct was to ask Jesus for help. I believe we miss many miracles in many areas of our lives, unseen miracles and obvious miracles, because our instincts are sometimes just not like Mary's when we run out of wine. When we face a difficulty or a problem or a trial in our lives, what's our first instinct to find a solution? Is it to run to Google? Is it to social media experts? Or is it to God? Is it to pray and to, to ask others to pray and to seek spiritual wisdom and counsel? You know, this, this week, you got, we got a lot of rain, right? And uh, my basement had a little bit of water in it. It's all right. It's all right. You should have seen it last year. It was way worse, okay? It, it was just a little bit of water, you know. And so I, there's this water. And I'm like, oh, no, it's back. What am I going to do? I don't want to be stressed out. I want, and, and, you know, I thought of all these things. What am I going to do? What's next? First thing I do, what do I do? Get on the internet on my phone. I don't pray. I don't call the 80 guys at this church that know something about owning a house. I don't call my dad who tried to alleviate the problem last year by fixing the drain that I think is causing the problem. I don't call the guy that put the drain in there to fix it in the first place. I don't call the guys that I know can help fix the drain. I get on my phone. I don't even call on God. And this is where, church, we got to think about what is our hope in? Who do we believe can do anything? Is it really Jesus? Because if it's really Jesus, we would trust his process. We would trust that hey, he calls us to pray. He calls us to ask others to pray, and he calls us to, to ask what they think about the situation. And I think this is where, as Western Christians, we got to be very, very careful. Because everything about the West is the individual. And so our temptation is, Jesus says, right, it's not my time. Like, we talk to Jesus, we pray. God kind of makes it clear, it's not time yet. And then we go, but I prayed about it. But I prayed about it, and now I know. Because I prayed about it, and I know God, and I don't, I don't need any advice, I don't need anybody in my life, I don't need any mothers in my life, I don't need any spiritual moms, I don't need any spiritual dads, I don't need any spiritual siblings, but, but, but I prayed about it. So now I know it all. You know what, Proverbs, Jesus believed in the Old Testament. 
There's a big book in the Old Testament called Proverbs. You know what Proverbs will call that? Folly. And that's what was happening in my backyard on Thursday after the heavy rain when it was me, Jacob Brisman, and Nate Schrader trying to deduce this problem. None of us know what we're doing. None of us know what we're doing. We're all like, well, I don't know. How did this flood happen? I don't know. Well, Jacob, do you know? Nate, do you know? None of us. I've owned a house for two years. They've never owned a house. And we're like the three stooges trying to figure it out. I don't know. I don't know. Well, why don't we check Google? Jacob's like, you know, I think I was smarter in high school. That, that, and, and I think we were like, I think we should just stop trying to figure this out. When he said that, I'm like, why are, why are we? We didn't even pray. <laughs> like, but this is, this is Western culture, Western Christianity. Oh, God is my personal savior. No such term existed in the first century church. Nothing like that existed. We got to be very careful, brothers and sisters, to guard against these cultural demons that are trying to invade the church of Jesus. And this is what prevents us from calling someone who we know can help us, but may challenge us, but may expose a little bit of our folly. Guarantee it. I would have called my dad or Chris Schneider or Jeremy Job or anybody in here that'd been like, you know, bro, that's probably not it. And I probably feel somewhat dumber, but you know what? My house will be drier because of it. What do you want, man? Do you want your ego or do you want a dry house? What do we want? Who do we trust in? Do we trust in the process of Jesus? That makes it, it's very clear in the Bible that this is about relationship with God, his relationship with other people as well. Are we going to trust in this Eurocentric Western, oh man, it's just me and God, me and God, me and vertical, all me and him all the time. And God's like, that, no, I, I don't think, you don't see that Jesus lived among the people. Like, it was never Jesus in a silo. Jesus went everywhere and interacted with everybody, ate dinner with everybody. Brothers and sisters, I want to challenge us to be like Mary when you face a problem this week. Turn to Jesus first. Pray first. Ask someone else who knows your life well. Ask them to pray with you. Pray together. Get as many people as possible praying with you. You know, we, uh, we, we talk about our, our churches, our fellowship of churches, we talk about being a discipling movement. And I was, I was talking to a brother named Ben Barnett, and he was saying, what if we said, man, we're going to be a prayer movement? We're going to be a prayer movement. We're going to go back to just turning and trusting in Jesus. And that's what it's going to be all about. Not to say we don't get discipling or, or any, any of those things, but what if our first instinct, even when we turn to one another, is, hey, let's pray. What is your instinct? What, is, what, is, what are the first things you turn to as soon as something happens? Is it to your phone? Is it to the TikTok expert that has, has the expertise on finances and how to get you to retire early and, and parenting, and, and they're going to tell you all you need to do about your marriage? And, and relationships, and we don't know if they're Christians or not, but hey, they, they've got, they got a bunch of fancy research and, and charts. You got, they got charts and pie graphs, and they, got, and they know how to lay it out all nice and neat in a one-minute TikTok snippet. So it all just is so accessible. Do we trust in that? Or do we trust? Our culture wants everything now. Mary had to say, you know what? I don't know what's going to happen, but I got to trust Jesus. And I got to be willing to wait this out. This family has to be willing to wait this out. That regardless of what he chooses to do, we are going to wait on the Lord. Can Jesus do anything in your life, in our lives? Do we believe this? Pray first, then seek input and pray together with another disciple that knows you well. Then act and see how God just decides to move and your finances, your parenting, your friendships, your evangelism, your marriage, and any area of your life. Amen? All right, let's keep reading here. Chapter, chapter 2, verse 4, right? This is where things get kind of kooky for us sometimes. When, when Jesus is like, why do you involve me? 
And then we start trying to do our own thing. Let's see what mother, let's see what Mary does. Verse 5. He says, his mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Nearby stood six stone jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so, and the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realize where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, everyone who brings out the choice wine first, uh, everyone brings out the choice wine first, and then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink. But you have saved the best till now. What Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee was the first of the signs through which he revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. After this, he went down to Capernaum with his mother and brothers and his disciples. There they stayed for a few days. So Jesus can do anything, but from this passage, this part, we see that Jesus can do whatever he wants. He can do whatever he wants to do. He's Jesus. Uh, you know, as we read the rest of this famous wedding, right, we, a lot of us know this. This is such a quoted miracle. And we know the end result, right? We see it. What we should pay attention to is how Mary responds to what Jesus said in verse 4, right? Because in verse 4, Jesus basically tells Mary, no. <laughs> Frankly, he's just like, no. It, he almost seemed a little bit annoyed that she would even bring him, bring up uh, him doing such a, such, a, such a powerful miracle this early in his ministry. But what is Mary, how does Mary respond? She doesn't argue with Jesus, but instead, she interestingly enough goes to the servants of this wedding, the servers of the very wine that ran out, and she tells them, do whatever he tells you to do. It seems like Mary is confident that Jesus would do something, even though she was not sure how he would choose to do it. As Mary walked with her son, as she walked with God in the flesh, she learned to believe that Jesus could do whatever it is he wants to do at any time, regardless of how we feel and think about what he wants to do. I think this is where we have the issue sometimes. It's Jesus, that's not what I want. It's not what I asked for. It's not what I prayed for. But Mary trusted that no matter what, even if his answer is not what she wanted in that moment, she trusted, hey, my son will take care of it somehow, some way. Whatever he does from here, hey, hey, look at you, hey, you you guys, come here. Whatever he does, whatever he tells you, you do it. I don't know what he's going to do, but you better follow him. No matter what Jesus decided to do after this request for help, She had enough conviction to advise those servants, hey, whatever it is, do it. There are times we will come to Jesus for help, and he may not respond the way we like or the way we would expect him to. In those moments, will we have the conviction of Mary and be able to look at the man or woman in the mirror who prayed those prayers and say, from here, do whatever he tells you to do. Well, we believe that Jesus can not only do anything, but that he can also do whatever it is he wants to do, because Jesus is Lord and not us. Living life with God, walking with God, means that even when it seems like God is not moving, it means that Jesus is doing exactly what he wants to do. And that regardless of how we feel about this plan, Jesus will take care of it. Somehow, some way, he will take care of this lack of wine at these parties that we host in our lives. I think we've all felt like, man, I'm at this party. I threw this party, and I I am out here left hanging. (laughs) I ain't got no wine. I did not know what I was getting myself into. Living life with God means that when we are in those jams, we trust that somehow, some way, Jesus will fix it. We sing that song. Do we trust in it? 
Living life with God, walking with God, means that in any given trial, in any given holding pattern, in any given tragedy, that Jesus still has a vision for your life. Just because God doesn't move when we want and how we want does not mean that he is not moving. How has Jesus not responded the way you would have liked him to? To a need or desire that you have expressed to him. Maybe multiple prayers have been expressed to him. And he has not moved the way you would like him to move. You know, we talked about challenging situations earlier, like conflict with our mothers or dads or conflicts with our children or our friends in the church or outside the church. Conflict is it's tough, right? Sometimes conflict just doesn't go away as much as we'd like it to. We could be talking relational challenges like that. We could be talking financial challenges. Like, God, please just move. I'm in a gym financially. And God, sometimes we just feel like we're just constantly stressed out about money. What about health challenges, right? Man, God, that's been hard for us for the last couple of years. It's been like every, every couple of months we got a test. Ever since we had the miscarriage, we got another test. And now it's like my kid, does, my kid wakes up when she wants to wake up, so I, I, I ain't sleeping very good. So I'm, th- I'm not thinking straight half the time. Relationship challenges, waiting for a kid, waiting for a wife, waiting for a husband. And we take these things to Jesus, and sometimes we ask for wine. And they can feel like Jesus just said, man, woman, this has nothing to do with me. I felt that. I don't know if you guys have felt that way. I felt that way. I'm like, God, are you going to do something about this, Jesus? And, and based on the circumstances, it kind of feels like he's kind of, it feels like he's saying he has nothing to do with this. And he walks away seemingly silent. In those moments, do we trust Jesus like Mary does and just choose to believe that there's going to be some kind of miracle on the other side? What I love about this passage is that in verse 10, Jesus didn't just give them more wine. He gave them the best. He gave them the best. When Jesus decided to intervene on his own terms, he gave that family in crisis not just an emergency pack of cheap wine. He didn't give them the cheap wine. He gave them top shelf the very best. And it was unprecedented. Even the, the... the, the head of the banquet was like, man, people don't normally do this. He totally flipped the situation upside down. Now the family, instead of being shamed, was being lifted up. Mary gave Jesus her request. Then she chose to just wait. She waited it out. And he, she let Jesus take care of it. On his own terms, on his own timing, and the result was the very best There are so many stories in scripture where God gave people the freedom to wait on him or to rush ahead of him. And when people rushed ahead of God, whether it was Saul rushing ahead of Samuel or Abraham and Sarah choosing to let Abraham have a concubine with Hagar, every time people don't let God do what he wants to do, when he wants to do it, the results are disaster. But when they wait, God gives them the choice best wine. You know, they're not here right now, but I think about Chow Wei and Angie Young. Think about them. They're, they're about to have their baby this week. Chow Wei waited for years to have a wife. He never rushed ahead of Jesus. He never stopped encouraging the other single women. He never started chasing non-Christian women. He stayed faithful to the Lord. And he never stopped serving. He never stopped letting the younger brothers stay at his place for cheap rent. And those were young men of God learning to be men on their own. So let's just say they didn't always help with the resale value of his property. (laughs) If I was child, I'd been like, cheap rent's over. You're on your own, buddy. And then he got married. And then it was challenging for him and Angie to have a child. It's challenging for a long time. But now here they are, ready to be parents this week. Let's be praying for them, amen? But Chow and Angie, they just let God have their way with their lives and their family. I'll never forget after the first miscarriage, 
me and Melissa, we, we got on our knees with Shia Wayne and Angie, and uh, we were I was like, we, we got to pray. And I, they're going through it. We got on our knees, and Shia Wei, I, I'll never forget, he, he prayed this prayer. He said, Lord, no matter what, we're not going anywhere. We're not going anywhere. I remember feeling emotional right there in that moment. I'm like, God, you got you to gotta bless these guys. Because he, that, that brother is resolved that no matter where this goes, I'm, I'm with you. I don't care what you do for me. You don't have to do anything for me or my wife. We're here. And I have a feeling as we waited, Jesus was just thinking, hey, God, just, just hang in there. Just hang in there. I'm going to give you my very best. Hang in there. But the miracles from God come only when Jesus wants them to come. And how he wants them to come. Mary didn't get to choose, and neither do we. We can only choose to believe that Jesus, at the end of the day, he can do anything. Mary, the mother of God, believed that about her son. Do we? believe that about Jesus this morning? And do we believe that Jesus can do anything he wants to do? Will we let him have his way with our lives? Even when things are uncertain and scary, do we believe that Jesus is working out the very best scenario? Not just for us individually, but for the entire family and the wedding party among us. If we can pray for strength and trust and answer yes to these questions, I believe we can have Mary's view of walking with Jesus and experience miracles just like Mary did. Amen? Amen. Amen. Love you guys. Thank you.